Consider a person B standing at the origin with the positive directed in the right direction and another person A standing at S equals 5 meters in the positive direction and another person K standing at S equals 10 meters also in the positive direction. And if I ask you what is the relative position of A with respect to B, which is written this way, R A slash B, then you would probably say 5 meters. And if I ask you what is the position of A with respect to K, you will probably say minus 5. So you probably guessed that A is 5 meters to the left of K, so he is minus 5 meters away because the positive in the right direction. And your guess is right if this is what you have in mind. But how did you come up with it? And this is the starting point for defining the relative motion. So let's look here. We have this person at the origin of the capital XY coordinate system. And he is at a distance RB from this person at point B. Now, if I move this person from the origin and he goes all the way to point A, then his distance from the origin now is RA. And because we are related to the origin, then this RA is a short of RA relative to O. But since O is the origin, we don't mention O, we just say RA. Now, if this person wants to be related to the person at B, his distance from the person at B is this small distance, which is only R A relative to B. So similarly, as we related A to the origin, we relate also A to B. And now, because we are relating to B, B becomes our origin. And this becomes another coordinate system. So again, in the first case, A is related to the origin of the big frame of reference, which is capital X, capital Y. And that's why we call it RA relative to O, or short as RA. But if we want to relate A to a person at point B, then we say RA relative to B, where B now becomes the origin of this coordinate system. And the definition of RA relative to B now becomes RA minus RB. And if we take the derivative, we get the velocity A relative to B, which is VA minus VB. And also one more derivative gives us the acceleration of A relative to B, which is AA minus AB. So notice one important thing, R A relative to B means A minus B. So whatever we mention first comes first minus the second. And I assume now that you understood how did you make the guess. So R A relative to K means R A minus R K. R A is 5 meters positive, R K is 10 meters positive, then 5 minus 10 is minus 5 meters. Okay, let's redo this again, but for a man who is standing at B and has a zero velocity, and another person on the bicycle at A who has a velocity of 5 meters per second to the right. Now the velocity equation becomes VA relative to B is VA minus VB. And because B has a zero velocity, 
this part goes away and VA relative to B now becomes only VA which is 5 meters per second and you can see here that the same concept applies so if B is not moving his velocity is equal to 0 we can say VA relative to 0 or just in short VA which is 5 meters per second and this physically means that B is seeing and feeling the actual velocity of A, which is 5 meters per second. So A is getting away 5 meters every second from B. But how about the situation? If B is running at 3 meters per second and A is at 5 meters per second, both to the right, and now we want to find the velocity of A relative to B. Using the same equation, VA is 5, VB is 3, and now VA relative to B will be only 2 meters per second. And this means that B is not seeing and feeling the actual velocity of A. With reference to B, B sees only that A is getting away from him with 2 meters per second. And here is a quick example to clarify the concept. The ship travels at a constant speed of 20 meters per second and the wind is blowing at a speed of 10 meters per second as shown. So this is the velocity of the wind and this is the velocity of the ship. Determine the magnitude and direction of the smoke coming from the smokestack as it appears to a passenger on the ship. Okay, here are two things that we have to agree first on. A passenger on the ship will feel the velocity of the ship. So actually, this person will have the velocity of the ship. The other thing is, if the ship is not moving, then the smoke coming from the smokestack will have the same magnitude and direction as the velocity of the wind. Or if you want to understand this in a different way, if we have some smoke in the air, then this smoke will move with the wind. So it will have the same magnitude and direction as the velocity of the wind. And this concludes that the magnitude and direction of the smoke as it appears to a passenger is actually the magnitude and direction of the wind with respect to the ship. And here, since we have two components, we use a vector quantity as follows. So velocity of the ship is 20 cosine 45 i plus 20 sine 45 j. And for the wind, it's 10 cosine 30 i and 10 sine 30 in the negative j direction. And now we just subtract vw from vs which is the velocity of the wind with respect to the ship or the velocity of the smoke with respect to the passenger it's the same thing and the result is two negative components negative i and negative j and we can find the magnitude using the square root of the square of both components because they are normal to each other and this gives us 19.9 meters per second. And to find the direction, we just take the correct triangle. So negative i means i in this direction. And negative j means that j in this direction. And here is the correct direction of theta, which is tan inverse of the y component which is this, over the x component, which is this, and it gives us 74 degrees.